How's it going guys? Brian Cusco here at Triple B. Last week, we took a look at all the reticulated pythons. The week before that, we took a look at all the ball pythons. This week, we're gonna look at all the other pythons and other snakes that we keep here. It's gonna include boas, carpet python, blood python, vermis python, you get the idea. You watching Triple B TV. True to Triple B fashion, we are going to start with my pair of corn snakes. I say they're mine, but they actually belong to my boys, even though I'm the one that does all the caring for them. We'll let them slide on that one. They are only two and five. I picked this pair up at the Pomona Super Show at a US Arc auction. Corn snakes are awesome. A corn snake was the first type of snake I had ever wanted when I was a kid, and I never got one, so. Now I've, now I've got two. If you know anything about corn snakes, you know that they do not like to sit still. I do like to recommend corn snakes as very first snake for first time snake keepers. Now, you know, you can take that with a grain of salt if you want to, but the thing about corn snakes and keeping them in North America is it's very easy to do. If you mess up corn snake husbandry and you live in North America, I've got a strong opinion that you shouldn't be keeping any snakes. <laughs> if you can't keep a corn snake alive because they don't need much but a little bit of food a little bit of water and the uh, the natural temperature and humidity and wherever you happen to live most likely will they will be able to survive in they are very hardy snakes they're also very reluctant to bite you which is also why they make a great snake the one downside to them being a first-time pet is that as you can see they are quite a bit squiggly and they don't really want to sit still for anything now that can be nice, especially if that's something you enjoy. It's a snake that moves around a lot versus something like a ball python that will sit very still for you. And they do like to burrow, so giving them a deep amount of substrate is not a bad idea so they can get down in that substrate and make themselves comfortable. Oh, and by the way, the names of these two are Cornflake and Popcorn, named by some of our fabulous viewers here on YouTube. Let's see if we can get a side-by-side, -side, real close-up headshot. We're trying, we're trying really hard. It's not happening. Next up here we have Holly. She is a Caramel Coastal Carpet Python, who I got from my buddy Travis Johnson over at Living Legless Reptiles at yet another US Arc auction at the Southwest Carpet Fest. Landed me my first carpet python. I had my choice from a number of different carpet pythons and I chose her because of that awesome head stamp. This perfectly symmetrical little star type head pattern that she has going on. I thought that was just fantastic and she had to come home with me and I believe she's in shed right now. The thing I learned about carpet pythons from my buddy Travis, especially things like a caramel coastal, is they sort of start out like ugly ducklings, meaning that they, you know their color is a little more dull as they're younger and as they age they tend to brighten up and, and get better looking. And I, I saw that hold true in the parents of this snake right here. So pretty awesome stuff. Carpet pythons are definitely semi-arboreal. They will definitely utilize any kind of perch or climbing apparatus that you choose to put into your enclosure for these little beauties. As you can see, these snakes are definitely arboreal. They have very much prehensile tails. <laughs> they do not want to let go of this perch. So I've never actually tried to hold these two at the same time. And it's not too bad since they're fairly young still. But these are, of course, oh, peeing. <laughs> Spray, musk, this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge. These are Morauke Locality Patternless Scrub Pythons. They are really awesome snakes, really cool to work with. I don't know if you can see on camera there, the iridescence showing up on their skin is one thing and they're just on point. The, if, if you wanna talk about a snake being on point, scrub pythons, just they key up real quickly. They're a lot of fun to work with, not quite as intelligent I think as retics but still highly intelligent looking and very athletic snakes and a lot of fun to work with, especially if you work with them when they're young and the bites aren't that bad. You can get them out of that bitey phase fairly easily if you just a little, spend a little bit of time with them. And again, as you can see, holding onto that perch there, they are extremely arboreal and definitely benefit from having something to climb on inside of their enclosure. I'd say if you're going to judge on which were more arboreal, carpet pythons or scrub pythons, I think scrub pythons would take the cake for more arboreal. That's just my opinion. I've got no scientific facts to back that up. The names of these two are Frank and Annie. One of them is definitely gonna have to let go of this perch because only it's going back in only one of their enclosures. But as you can see, their tails are still very much locked onto this 
little perch here. So hopefully we can get him to let go. I think I'm about to make it happen right now. That's not the one we need to let go of. This belongs to, this belongs to her. This is your girlfriend's. You gotta let go of it. Thank you. What cool snakes. Very curious, very exploratory. Let's see if we get a double head shot there. Oh yes, oh, only for a moment. Oh, nice. Oh, please give us just a little bit more. Give me just a little more time. Oh, that's a nice shot right there. Oh, please hold it, hold it. Oh, it was good while it lasted. What cool snakes, man. Seriously, I can't, I can't say enough times how, how cool these snakes are. I got these from Dan Muliri at Pomona Reptile Super Show. I've been having a lot of fun with them. All right, you two, we're moving up. Next up here, we have Margie. She is a sun glow boa constrictor and she gets her name from Margarita Pizza, something most of you subscribers probably know already. She's an awesome snake. Her claim to fame, if you want to call it that, is shedding in my hands when she very first got here. She just came right out of the snake bag and started to shed right in my hands. And we had a great bonding experience right from the beginning. And then she went ahead and did that same thing a second time, which blew my mind yet again. It's a really cool experience to have a snake just start nudging into your fingers and then all of a sudden, hey, I'm shedding right here in your hands. And she's living up to her name in these lights, man. She is glowing. She is actually the only boa constrictor we keep here. I do have a couple other boas that I've been sitting for a buddy, but they're not ones that I keep full time. So she right now is the only boa constrictor. And I, I just thought a boa would be cool. And she is. She is. Look at them head boobs. Booby. Booby, 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 booby. All right, guys. As we move up the ranks here, it's gonna get harder and harder to fit these snakes into the tubs. This is Sangria, our beautiful blood python. We picked this beautiful girl up at the San Diego Super Show back in, I believe it was July of 2015. And she was a feisty little girl, man. She just struck at everything that came up to her. For those of you that have been subscribed to the channel, you've probably heard this like a broken record already. But she was. She used to strike like crazy at everything that came anywhere near her. And as you can see now, she is just mellow, chill, docile. I can let the boys hold her. I can let my mom hold her. I can let anybody hold this snake. And, I, and with confidence that she will be just fine and chilled out. Let's try to get a nice headshot for the camera up above there. Can you give us a nice headshot? Yeah, that's not too bad. She'll even tolerate little chin rubs. <laughs> kind of. She's awesome, man. I love this snake. It's one of those snakes you can just like cuddle like a big baby. You guys want to get a quick look at the side and belly of her? Look at that belly. That's pretty dramatic. Pretty dramatic looking belly. Such cool patterning going up the sides. It's like the most epic ball python you've ever seen. Almost kind of looks like the Pompeii if you think about it. If it were a ball python morph. And as the saying goes, last but certainly not least is Roxanne. On cue, the most talkative snake in our snake room. Loves to talk, has a lot to say, and we love her for that. She, of course, is a hypo Burmese python and a very, very beautiful one of that. Picked her up at Prehistoric Pets. Uh, I believe she was the result of a partnered project between ESP, or El Segundo Pythons and Prehistoric Pets back in the day. Again, another snake that came here just biting everything, biting my fingers, biting my face. And now she won't. Now she's just like, she, she talks a lot. She's got a lot to say, but just does not strike anything but a rat <laughs> or a little rabbit. I didn't really see her fitting in this tub, to be honest, but look at that, fits right in. That's the amazing thing about big snakes, man. They can fit in some of the places you would never imagine they could fit. You see them, they're big, long, and thick, and yet they can just squish themselves into little tiny spaces. You could probably fit two of her in this tub. Look at that. Let's get a nice headshot there. There we go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. How about a little headshot up front? Yep, just another example of a gorgeous, gorgeous snake. Well, I don't know, guys. I think uh, we can't go any bigger than this unless we get back into the retics, which we already done. We this is this is it for the day. This is it for the night. But thank you guys for watching. If you have a moment, please go check out our sponsor. They're doing a lot of good things for us here at Triple B and also for the entire reptile community by providing awesome caging for you guys to keep your snakes. If once a week is enough content for you, you can always come over and check out the personal channel. Link is down in the description. There's a link down in the description for all kinds of cool stuff you can do to keep in contact and find out what's going on with us and 
where we're going, what we've been doing, where we're headed, all that kind of stuff. Maybe you can join up, be on the channel. Who knows? The possibilities are really endless. The only way you can find out is if you go down in that description and find out all the possibilities that are down there. Next week, we're going to take you down to Prehistoric Pets to hang out with Jay Brewer and check out some of the awesome retics that he's produced down there. Maybe even pull out one of the big, big girls. And until then, you've been watching Triple B TV. Y'all take care. Perfectly symmetrical. Um, my my, uh, I picked this pair up at the uh, Pomona Super Show with one of the NARBC. <laughs> these two are awesome. I picked these. I picked. Well, it feels live. Yes, it is live. One day I will have a studio outside of the snake room, and it will be air conditioned. Now, carpet pythons are definitely definitely semi iffy. I'm losing it, I'm losing it. Oh. I am cheesy. Yes, it's true. And as the saying goes, last but certainly most not, keep your snakes in the most special way. <laughs> <laughs>